Good evening, Galleon. This is Tom O'Leary, uh, back uh, after a couple of weeks' absence. Uh, really good to, to rejoin uh, this audience. And before we get to questions and answers, uh, I'd like to just talk about a couple of uh, topics of the day, if, if I could. Uh, it's, it's the time of year when the United Fund is out uh, trying to get to uh, potential donors, historic donors, through their employer, one thing or another. And uh, I think that the United Fund can be a, a, a tremendous asset to a community. And, but, and I think that in Galleon, as part of the Crawford County United Way, we need to get a little more focused and, and uh, raise our presence uh, in this United Way committee structure and, uh, and uh, a provider selection. Had a chance to uh, speak with two different groups, actually. The, the, couple of the leaders from uh, this area's United Way uh, came to the office today and we had, a, I thought, a constructive um, conversation about some of the things that are positive and their distribution and some of the things that I think uh, leave parts of our community uh, underserved. I want to take a minute or two and talk about that. I think, however, the, how we solve that problem is offering up some of our community leadership, some of Galleon area people to serve on some of the, the committees uh, that both uh, screen projects and make final recommendations. Um, uh, Crawford County, you know, the old Galleon United Way is now part of Crawford County and it's part of a three county uh, administrative area with Wyandotte and Marion County. So uh, I really encourage people to make their interest in serving on a United Way board or at one of their selection committees so that what I consider an underrepresentation of the needs in, in our community in Galleon uh, are uh, we can remedy that. Um, so it, really positive, I'm glad they came in, they listened, uh, we had an exchange of ideas, I honestly gave them some some ideas about some areas that uh, I think can be a, a, a an improvement in the future, but I also talked to them about another group that had come to see me last Friday, and those are representatives of the Galleon uh, Golden Age Club. And um, you know, I think there's a lot of confusion in in throughout the county, but particularly in Galleon, about how they that organization, the Galleon Golden Age uh, Center, uh, receives their funding. And I would just take a second and make try to make clear to uh, viewers, listeners that they do not receive any direct funding for operations or any programming from the Crawford County Council on Aging. That group that receives taxpayer money from around the county does not provide any service here. Now, folks who might uh, question that or defend uh, Crawford County Council on Aging, they're being a little bit too uh, thin-skinned, if you will. It, it, there, there are services here. People who receive Meals on Wheels, generally state or federally funded, and there are people who get transportation services almost entirely federally funded through the state. So I don't want to suggest that there are no uh, services there are, but those are services that are largely uh, underwritten through state and federal funds, and a very small amount of that taxpayer money from Galleon and Polk Township for that matter uh, really works its way back to um, the you know our our golden age center, and so I think that's something that that I hope going forward um, that uh, some sort of partnership between council on aging our local club can be forged, and we can start to move ahead. But it's something that has been uh, I think it's poorly understood, and I think to a certain extent it's reflected in the fact that the golden age center was declined as a as a United Way agency. So. Enough said on that. I, I'm kind of uh, trying to enlist some other crusaders to go on this crusade of equity for funding for seniors in Crawford County 
for galleonites uh, and also to begin to raise the interest level among leaders that would want to serve on our uh, countywide United Way board. So um, uh, that's topic number one. The second topic somewhat related and I won't um, say anything other than the word on the street is that longtime commissioner, Galleon commissioner, commissioner from Galleon, Mo Reslot is not uh, going to seek re-election. And holy Toledo, I was at a Republican fundraiser last weekend. My God, there were more flies flying around with petitions to run for commissioners that, than flies flying around the, the venue. So a lot of people out and running and the people I had talked to um, there had one thing in common. They weren't Galleonites. And so I have real strong opinions about and would love to answer some questions or talk with anybody that wants to come up and get into more detail about how Galleon is disadvantaged when you have particularly the last year and a half or so, sort of a change over there in that office. But the last year and a half, there are three or four times in which either in attention to the needs of Galleon or a complete uh, ignoring of uh, requests for funding that had gone to the commissioners has taken place. And so, you know, the, the sounds a little bit maybe silly, but the time has come for people in Galleon, somebody to run for that office. The two offices up next year. There's an early filing deadline because of the presidential race. And so I really encourage people in Galleon who, who, who uh, have some awareness of how county government operates and who have seen how it's operated the last few years will um, make commitment to themselves, their community, and get their name on the ballot because Galleon honestly suffers uh, when there aren't Galleon area commissioners on that board of commissioners. So um, there's some questions about that. I'll go into more detail. But what I would promise, promise y'all, is that either in this mayoral thing before council meetings or, or in, in podcasts uh, over the next year or so, we're going to address that issue. I'm going to try to explain how it is that countywide issues uh, uh, can be addressed, but they're not going to be addressed by the Galleon area uh, doing what uh, people in the overall county or in the Bucyrus area want. So it's not a it's not a full fledged fight, but I think the reality is that we've been shortchanged uh, by county government, and and we need some commissioners that will uh, reverse that trend. So. With that, I'll kind of stop. There are plenty of projects going on in the community and some questions and some updates that I'm sure are there. Um, the now month-long question about what's going in on Heisey Park will become more and more evident over the next uh, couple of weeks. Uh, there's been a kind of the sub-assembly of the playground parts uh, down uh, at Mosier Industrial. Uh, they've, been a, they've been excellent uh, and, and a key local um, part of getting this project actually installed and so uh, they've allowed the, uh, the manufacturer, the toy um, assemblers if you will, to assemble those toys down on South Street and then they'll move them up uh, and we're counting on them to move some extremely heavy boulders which will be one of the uh, fun climbing features that'll, that'll be part of this uh, playground. And I'm, I've become really gun shy about, about offering dates, but uh, the good news is, is the company's here on site and is going to work through until the project's completed to get that going. Um, still going to try to do repairs to Market Street Bridge. Uh, we had a, have a, not a lot of funding left for highway or bridge projects. And uh, I think the, 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 the sort of worst section of pavement, the, the highest target is estimated as being a little bit more than we have the resources for. It also is large enough that we would have to bid the contract and so that, uh, that really looks like that'll happen next year. But I'm a long way of saying I think the, the North Market Street Bridge will, uh, will be reinforced and that'll tide it over for 10 or 12 years and, and uh, 
I think that's the best solution rather than a more expensive full replacement, but we're going to work on those details over the next few months or years. Um, can't quite remember, Matt, uh, if it was mentioned, but the city uh, uh, was awarded another $550,000 for the widening of 598 um, and um, and that's really going to allow that project, all the funding to come in place, and we're going to move ahead. Uh, so from Arby's roughly out to Brant Road will be three lanes, and I am not can't uh, say for sure if it will start in 21. Most likely that project will be built in calendar year uh, 2022. <clears throat> it's a long ways out. That's the trade-off when you um, apply for federal funds and the requirements uh, among other things, uh, cause the, the delivery date and the, that critical path to construction to be longer than some of the other improvements that we've funded uh, on Portland Way over the last couple of years. So, um, gosh, I think there's probably some other things, but I'll stop for now, take a breath, see if there are anybody who's uh, sent in or called in or typed in any questions. Yes, we've got a few already tonight. Uh, first question tonight comes from Mark. He asked, could we please lengthen the uh, timing on the turn signals at the Four Corners and also at the signal at uh, State Route 19 and Winchester Road? Uh, the, the one that allows you to go uh, east on Bucyrus Road or in that branch that's four lane and has a continuous. I'll look at that, Mark. The, the part of the signal sequencing that is, um, I think, catches my attention and I worry about is not the lengthening of the, the arrow, that, that cycle, but it doesn't, in my, you know, my view, it doesn't stay red long enough. I mean, I have a lot of, of accident history there because of that, you know, that short red time, but I, I think that's because there's so much local traffic and I think uh, people have become familiar with people scooting uh, in, you know, on the on the red light, if you will. So I think uh, if it has a little bit longer all red, uh, ideally that would cause people to, to stop the intersection. But sometimes you have to be careful. It just doesn't it doesn't add a second or two to the people scooting through uh, after it's turned yellow and then red. So. Yeah, it can be adjusted, and I'll say something to the guys tomorrow. And we'll, it's generally that signal timing at that intersection is the line department's area expertise. And if we don't, if they're not sure how to tweak it, uh, we can, sounds funny, but we can always call ODOT to come in. Uh, they're traffic engineers over there, expert in that. And um, I, I agree with the first questioner, and we need to tweak both those. It's a good thing. Hate, it, hate arguing with people over the internet. No, actually, I love doing that. Never mind. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, next, not really a question, just a comment from uh, Rita. She pointed out that, uh, I guess, over the weekend, maybe, uh, over at the recycling trailer, somebody left a bunch of uh, trash bags outside of the bin. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I thank you, Rita. I think the... Uh, <clears throat> the amount of capacity we have for real recyclables or people wanting to dump their trash there has never been quite right. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I'd rather um, deal with the Crawford County Council, no, Crawford County re Recycling uh, Group than deal with an international trash hauler. So, you know, not that I, every time a question's asked, I'm going to refer back to decisions made by the commissioners, but. About every time it's their, it's their accounting, I think they should. So I look for, if that's contracted out, uh, that being the, re the operation of the recycling center, I think you know, one can, can see that level, the current level of service. It's always been a frustration for city people here in Galleon, uh, becoming you know, more and more of a tussle to get adequate capacity. So. Okay, thanks, Mayor. Uh, next question tonight comes from Josiah, and I apologize, I lost the comment itself, but uh, he wanted to know about the possibility of building an overpass on Portland Way south over the train tracks. You know, the, um, yeah, I think you're right, and it's, it's, I know some people will 
goof on me for saying this, but it really is more than likely a seven to ten million dollar project. Um, the g <laughs> I'm a fan of trains, and I like to think I have an appreciation for what um, our freight rail system adds to our economy. And there's all kinds of numbers about every rail car, every train takes X number of trucks off the highway. All that stuff's true. But when you're at a junction of a, a railroad, uh, in, a, in a busy junction, the line that goes from roughly Cleveland to Indianapolis, but through Galleon and on out through Marion, I don't, I'm telling people what they already know, it's an extremely busy line. And they really, meaning the railroad, really doesn't have a good way out of avoiding blocking trains. Not only at Portland Way South, 61, whatever you all call it, but uh, throughout the town. And, you know, for a while, I, it's one of those things that uh, if it, it falls off the front burner, unless uh, people like Josiah and other people for whom it probably affects him two or three times a day, uh, begin to make that a top priority so that people in City Hall understand that uh, putting together the planning and the resources, meaning the engineering and the money for that project has got to become a, a, uh, a new top priority. In my view, once uh, 598 is widened, of course this year it's the signal at Brant Road and 598 and we'll be moving ahead to widen that. but. Uh, I guess Josiah just, you know, come to a committee meeting, the Parks Committee, excuse me, Parks Committee, the Street Committee, I'm sorry, or come to a council meeting. Just let that point of view be known. I've always found, contrary to a lot of people, uh, think that, that government uh, sometimes overreacts to citizen concerns and complaints. So some folks will stay home and say, ah, it doesn't matter, they won't listen. I actually see that somebody comes with a specific problem and even better, some sort of solution for it, um, government tends to run to try, to try to take care of those voice concerns. So kind of a long answer. The short answer is, yeah, I, I, it's possible to do it, but we got to realize it's a $10 million type project and, uh, and, you know, big for a little town, but not impossible. And I think the condition on the railroad will go even, um, uh, I mean, th there'll be more trains, hopefully, as the economy continues to go and, and uh, freight m w wants to move. So uh, just hold the next question, man. I want to tell a, a railroad story from today. Maybe a, other people saw it. So about 8.15 or 8.30, something like that, there was a train that came through Galleon, wasn't stopped, and it was, God, it seemed like it was a mile long because I stood and watched it for a while. And they were propeller blades for uh, windmills uh, to produce electricity. I thought, well, that's kind of fascinating. You know, I'd, I wonder where they're going and what scenery they're going to affect there. Um, but overall, you know, when the wind's blowing, it's a, it's a good solution. I left, I think I came back from lunch, but I left and came to City Hall, and sort of ironically, there was a, a, a train full of empty coal cars. So I, I guess that's maybe a commentary. It struck me as how um, the future is here for old folks like me. You better get with it, and the wind's blowing, and and uh, and the coal is empty, and the and the windmills are on their way to being uh, added to the grid. So it'd be kind of interesting to see what happens. And but uh, the, the you you it you you really get a flavor for the kinds of things that are happening in the economy. Uh, when you're sitting there upset, PO'd because there's a train blocking so you could turn it into a learning experiment for their kids. What's in that, uh, that car? All that presupposes the car is moving. It's those stop trains that are the, that can be literally the killers. So yeah, Josiah, uh, yeah, we need to look at that as a project, but you're, you might be seven or eight years out, um, if you were able to tap into a funding source and you got to spend a while finding that right mix of funding. But anyway, that's probably the best answer I can give. And
I've actually built a bunch of those in other jobs. So if the if that becomes a top priority in the community, you know, the, so you know, there's a at least some experience and leadership at City Hall that can get us close to getting it funded and then constructed. Okay, thanks, Mayor. Yep. Uh, next question tonight uh, comes from Tina. She actually has uh, two questions, two different topics. So first one is, has anything been decided on the tree trimming department? Well, uh, the, the tree trimming department was phased out a few years ago. And the I think that was uh, to the uh, benefit of the taxpayers. <clears throat> and then it's, uh, what it does is free up enough money that we can still have a contracted tree trimming operation, pretty significant contract, and uh, avoid uh, some of the downtime that happened when you had tree trimmers who weren't certified uh, uh, CDL drivers, what is it? commercial driver's license. So they can't help you in the winter. And so uh, they were a little bit limited, and so we moved away from that. Um, uh, transferred one and two people retired, which is kind of how you see changes in the time I'm mayor in the staff. You don't need to be jerking people around too much, but as retirement opportunities come up, you can use those often to reshape the, the, uh, the department. So um, just last meeting, I believe, if I'm not, if not, not wrong, there was a council authorized a contract for a $150,000 worth of tree trimming uh, that will be done, I think, most of it yet this fall, and if not, you know, kind of carrying through the winter months. Okay. Uh, the other um, question Tina mm -hmm. asked uh, concerns handicapped sparking, parking up on the square. Uh, she says the existing spots do not provide adequate access to the curb cuts to the sidewalk, and she also suggested that the trees on the square be removed to add additional parking. Yeah, I doubt it. Just my my guess is on the second issue, you run into a um, a lot of flack doing that. I'm not. I'd have to take a look and see what exactly which parking spaces are taken away by the trees. They need a haircut. I'll give you that, Tina. And uh, and although they're not what the what the contract tree trimmer won't be cutting trees uptown. I think we can get some of our service department to uh, cut a few of those back. I've also noticed that trees in the city right away in the devil strip are obstruct uh, stop signs a little more fre frequently than they should. Um, on the first topic, we're going to do something about all of the walkability and the accessibility issues in the downtown. It's, it's never quite been right since they did the, the signal project and installed the, the current uh, walk, don't walk signs back in uh, 2003. I've never been satisfied with it and I was, I tr that sounds like BS, but it's true. I tried to get some of those issues that we live with corrected when I was at ODOT and just it fell on deaf ears. So yeah, it's really about time to do something about the sidewalk surfaces and p parking for handicapped parking uptown. I, I would, uh, I'll agree with that. And uh, we're working on sidewalk funding and in that mix, uh, we're gonna have to deal with some of these handicap ramp approaches. What really helped me, us, is if you either sent us another message, you said w where specifically are the worst locations and have a general idea to make sure, however, that we're, that the areas that cause you the most trouble are people that, that use the handicap ramps that are, you know, friends or family or whatever, then we know which are the worst and uh, we can address those, I think, without having a grand solution for fixing every, uh, of the, every one of the many, um, areas uptown that could use a leveling or a new a new a, a, a piece of concrete poured so i hope that answers her questions or observations yes it did okay uh thank you next question tonight comes from chris 
uh, suggested, uh, how about doing something for the teens in Galleon, particularly those 12 to 15 years old? Wait, the always an issue. I remember being 12 to 15. <laughs> no, that makes some people laugh. Doesn't remember what he had for lunch yesterday, but he, no. Um, I'd say one thing about it that's maybe not meant to disagree, but they're, that's a real independent stage. You know, they kind of doing something for them is kind of kind of contrary to being that age in, in, in my experience. And the, the takeover of the uh, digital age has really impacted what, what 12 to 15 year olds do. Um, but I think on the general point, I, I would agree with that. Um, what we're doing at, at Icy Park is probably not going to be too exciting to anyone over 12, but the playground that's be, that is uh, in the process of being installed is really more for, let's say, the 7 or 8 through 12-year-old. It's not a little kid's playground. It's kind of a medium-sized kid's playground. Um, you know, the point that's made, and I know not everybody's an athlete, not everybody's a musician, but I think the thing that really is important about that question is the schools provide a lot of activities uh, for teenagers and preteens of that age. And so, um, you know, my, my main answer, my primary answer to that would be, you know, the, for kids that age, um, in becoming involved in rolling in sports or music or something like that through the schools is uh, still, I think, a real positive uh, way for them to spend their after school time and develop some discipline as they uh, get work ready or move into high school uh, sports or varsity sports, as they say. So, you know, I, the uh, one thing we've not really accomplished with this program. Uh, is really kind of a give and take. So if, without being jerky to this person that asked the question, they'd send in another question, which is like, what kind of things are you talking about? Because I really like to say yes to a good idea uh, rather than say, well, look, there's, you know, join the, uh, the, the uh, tennis team or do this or do that. So if there's an idea, uh, that's a good thing. I, I, I'm Still hopeful that there's a the skating rink's going to open up in Galleon West. I haven't heard anything to the contrary. And that that it's a funny age where uh, skating with your friends starts to be a little less cool. 14, 15, but I think for 12 and 13 year olds and <clears throat> and um, you know the intermediate school. I guess it's that age. I'm not qu quite sure honestly what they call it, but think the skating rink uh, up in Galleon West maybe is an answer. So if, if he sends in uh, a question, I don't know quite how to accomplish a dialogue uh, with this, but we can certainly go back and forth if there's a question. All right, got anything else? Uh, yeah, just a couple more. Um, the one we all knew was coming. Dawn asked if there's an update on a grocery store. Yeah, I've, I've heard, um, so I can tell you I'm not sure um, uh, I've been told that there's a, a works, uh, excuse me, a deal in the works, excuse me. And, um, and so I can, you know, I, I, without being too jerky, I've heard, you know, we've heard that before. I'm pretty optimistic. I think the city is only, would likely only be involved in any kind of financing to help them get going if it involved the installation of new, more efficient equipment. Uh, so there's an offer that had been made, gosh, it seems like a month or six weeks ago to assist in the, the cost of installing new or, or new to that location equipment, air conditioning and some other things. But as far as clearing the liens and those sorts of things that have stood in the way of getting that property open uh, and, um, and providing groceries again, uh, we're really not going to, I don't see us in the business of helping um, pay someone else's lien, but we will, if they put new equipment in, be happy to finance it. So I'll stop repeating myself. And that's about all I, I know. We, we, we continue to, to get ready to reach out to save a lot at the right moment or, 
when their some of their real estate and ownership questions clarify. Um, but other than that, that's our that's the two um, best hopes. And my hope is that the Port Authority will soon to, will be soon in a functioning a state in a functioning mode. Uh, won't have to tackle that the financing of a new grocery operation as one of their first projects. I, I'm hopeful that uh, the private sector can can uh, gel and uh, we can get something going. Okay, thanks, mm -hmm. Mayor. Uh, next question tonight comes from Shirley. Uh, she asked, "Where are they at with the new apartments?" Yeah, I think on uh, Friday. Uh, morning I believe it is there's gonna be a groundbreaking so I'm not sure I think uh, the invited group at this point is, is the any of the public uh, but we certainly reached out to the school board which um, uh, worked real well with us to provide the incentives uh, for the developer I think city officials will be invited uh, chamber and seem like they're oh I think the, the people in the plaza next door I think are invited so yeah, I don't expect a big, uh, expect good weather or else, and, and I don't expect a big event, but I think they're, they're anxious to get going. I think there's actually going to be some dirt moved on Wednesday, but the ceremonial groundbreaking will be um, on Friday. And like anything else, there's, I'm sure they have certain objectives, construction objectives to accomplish before the winter shuts them down. So that'll be, we'll probably learn more about that on Friday. But yeah, it's moving ahead. And, uh, you know, part of me says it's about time, but another part of me says it's just kind of how projects of this magnitude, uh, they take a little longer to get every uh, piece in place. And so financed, contractor on site, it's time to turn some dirt and get it going. Okay. And next question tonight comes from Ashley. Uh, she asked about the possibility of adding street lighting near the former high school property. You know, somebody asked that last time, and I think there's something in the works. I think you know, it's two weeks ago or a month ago, whenever it was. They pointed that out, and I guess I'm not sure where Ashley's talking, but I think it's it's especially noticeable on Church Street uh, in that section, kind of between Church and, and uh, North Boston. So, yeah, you're right, and uh, it's a matter of, of getting uh, the pole and a street light and uh, getting that 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 project if you will in the uh, line department's workload and and matt will remind me to make sure that that gets passed on again um, and maybe they have it scheduled and i'm not aware of it but i i would agree with you that there's a there's a dark spot through there anything else Keep going. I'm that, having fun. No? That is actually all the questions I have for right all now. All right. Well, I'll have to make up some. Hand me that. There's a blue idiot's guide to remembering what, what uh, we need to talk about. Let's see if we got that. Leaf collections on there. I hadn't talked about that. We're going to buy, as I understand, a, 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 a new to us but used a leaf picker upper machine. Uh, so we have been operating with three. I think by and large, given you know kind of how the weather will come in, rain and mess you up for a few days. I think by and large, uh, our leaf collection um, efforts have been improving, and uh, you know I feel pretty good about them. And we add a little bit more uh, mechanical d device. It's, I think this is a two two person uh, device instead of a three person. That ought to help us. And the the they're, those darn uh, machines are kind of touchy and it seems like every year one goes out and a part that you you don't keep on on hand and it, it you know it cuts our a number of hours in a particular week down by a third when when one of them goes out so we're going to add a fourth and um, and then you know hopefully we we'll, won't have mechanical failures but we're a little bit a better equipped to get through that if if that kind of annual breakdown happens so uh, leaf collection what else is on there Matt I yeah, I don't have my glass. Oh, yeah, you know, thanks. Jim Hedges would be really pissed, and he'd have a right to be really pissed, uh, if I didn't mention Oktoberfest. Um, there's an, a, a handful of new things that, they're, that this new group is trying. Um, I'm, I'm, I don't know, excited sounds giddy and kitty, but they're, uh, you know, they're doing some things a little bit different, and uh, 
uh, with some with tribute bands and the music side, and with some res- wrestling one night I think and boxing the next. Uh, there'll be, um, however, the the kind of traditional rides as I understand it, kind of amusement rides, and then another thing that Jim and his committee are doing is taking the uh, arts and crafts that you hear some people complain about going down Harding Way and. They're putting them all under a tent. So people who want to go, um, you know, uh, buy a tapestry or buy some jewelry or whatever else uh, catches their eye, still be able to do that, but it won't be uh, on Harding Way. And, and, and uh, so that, uh, that part of the activity is uh, going to be, I think, in behind Planet 14 on uh, South Columbus, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. So anyways, yeah, it should be a good thing. And, uh, you know, went away last year, heard a lot about how the people wanted it back. There's one way to make it an ongoing success, and that's uh, come on up and, and see what's different and, and uh, spend a little money, and, and in that way we can continue to have that fall festival. So you wrote that real big so I, I even I without glasses could read that. So I don't... Um, uh, oh, I, there is another one on here, Matt. We're trying to forget that. There's two pieces of legislation tomorrow night worth mentioning. Uh, one, I, we, and we hope both pass. Uh, one is the purchase of some ground necessary to complete the right-of-way for the bike path. And the other one is council authorizing the service directory to bid the bike path. So... Um, Tell you the truth, if we get the contract signed and we get some of the clearing done, I'll consider that a big success. I, what I expect, uh, it won't be done this year, uh, but it, we're going to get a good uh, a good start on it so it can be completed early in the spring. And I want to uh, especially thank uh, Jay Levant, uh, who really uh, was uh, very uh, gracious and granting us an easement, didn't charge us for anything, and uh, really made that happen on the north end. That's really, uh, if you think of where the old a- access to the junkyard was, um, that's really where you'll pull into park if you if you uh, jump on the bike hiker trail on the north end. And then the other end of it, fortunately, is only a, a little less than a mile away over at uh, the wastewater treatment plant uh, in the Hosford Road parking area over there. So anyways, uh, those are two big things I want to mention. And, and uh, so we're, we're, you know, we're maybe pushing uphill to get a sewage project uh, sold, but I, I'm, I feel confident after talking to one holdout property owner that we'll get that done. So the, the project that's going to bring sewer to the east part of Charles Street and those two or three businesses out there. Uh, I'm real uh, hopeful that that gets sold. And they can, the contractor can do a lot till the winter uh, freezes over. So I think that project will get a good running start and then be finished up in the spring. So, um, All righty, hear that old whistle blowing. That means old lonesome Tom better hang it up and head on down the line. But uh, seriously, uh, appreciate everybody uh, watching. A lot of questions. Um, I'm, as I said before, uh, it's important for Galleon to have a presence in the Board of, uh, of County Commissioner's Office, an active presence, one that's going to understand uh, uh, what we need here in Galleon. And, uh, and I think uh, whatever United Fund money that Galleon area agencies get, that's, you know, that's a good thing, but I'm of the opinion we need to do work within that structure to get more money because there's some key Galleon area service providers uh, that I, I think are, you know, have been, um, you know, haven't received the funding they should. So well, I sound like a, like, a, like a toothless tiger, don't I, you guys? Oh, well, I better go home and take a nap. But really got to push those issues. The uh, Galleon's role presence in the courthouse has kind of slipped a little bit over the last few years. and. Uh, I think uh, a focused effort can, uh, can, if you will, regain some of those seats and, and, um, and change the way uh, uh, we're dealt with by the commissioner's office. So if that doesn't stir them up, uh, nothing will. And uh, 
I don't want to say uh, get get the tombstone ordered for the countywide EMS, but it looks like that that I talked about a month or two ago about how that may not be a good idea for the city of Galleon and Polk Township. Turns out a lot of people in the county and local officials don't think it's a good idea in addition to us. So it's um, it's a lot easier to take a controversial stand uh, when you've got company. So I'm glad to see the company and. That idea that was really being pushed by the commissioners is just one more example of how they don't make even the slightest effort to understand things in Galleon. So with that, I'll, uh, I'll uh, say good night and, and uh, look forward to talking to you in a couple of weeks or any time in between and a decent agenda tomorrow night. So if you want some good local entertainment, come to the council meeting at 7 o'clock. See ya. Thank you.